Hey, I thought I'd check in with you and uh, just let you know I'm paying attention to what you have to say. I hope that uh, the experience so far in this class has been one of uh, provoking thought and reflecting on your faith as well as understanding the Old Testament narrative more more clearly. I was particularly um, interested in what uh, you had to say about Genesis 1 through 11. I, I wish, oh, I wish that we could spend the entire semester on that section. It is so uh, powerful, so fundamental to an understanding of uh, the identity of God and, and really the identity of people. Uh, there was some discomfort, I noticed, um, uh, among some of the responses uh, in, in terms of... Um, the closeness, the parallels between some of the narratives in Genesis 1 through 11 with narratives that existed in other ancient cultures. Uh, and I, I, wanted to, I wanted to see if I could clarify that when we look at Genesis 1 through 11, realize that we're looking at a reflection after um, a considerable amount of um, history has gone by. Much in the much in the way that a an author might write a write a book and then write the introduction to the book to to, to set the scene in the way that when you write a paper, for example, you might write the contents of that paper and then after you in a sense see what you said in the paper, you go back and write the introduction to put it at the front of it. Genesis one through eleven functions a lot like that. I think we have to at least ask the question, is it, is it probable that those, the, the primeval narrative was brought together, was put together after the exile? And in, in part, that it was seen as necessary to, to place that subject matter at the beginning of the, of the Old Testament documents, not simply because uh, it, it deals with a chronology that's earlier than the time of Abram, but because it helps to clarify the end understanding that will come as one reads through the entire Old Testament. Because it reflects a view that is so uh, monotheistic, a, a view that recognizes the sovereignty and the the grace of God in a way that some of the narratives that, that probably were produced earlier um, don't quite pick up. When when we start with in Genesis 12, looking at uh, the story of Abram, for example, notice that the focus is very sharp. Does does the narrative include references to other uh, cultures? Yes, but only as they touch on Abram. And uh, that will continue to be the way as the history of Israel is traced. What is important, frankly, is not the rest of the world, but Israel. It's only as, as Israel begins to encounter other um, uh, other cultures and other understandings, and as they begin to reflect on how are we different, what what makes our God different from the gods that are worshipped by uh, by other peoples, as they reflect on that, they get a bigger sense of who God is, of the of the majesty, the sovereignty, the the, the power of this of this God that they they've considered pretty much a tribal God. In the, in the beginning. So when you look back through Genesis 1 through 11, try to, try to see it in terms of, a, in a sense, a conclusion as well as an introduction. That after all of the experiences Israel will go through and after the words that are delivered by the prophets and, and after the experiences of encountering other peoples, finally they begin to get it, who this God is. Not just a God for Israel, not just a God for Abram's descendants, but the, the universal, the, the, the God who is in charge of everything that is. 
I, I think this will help in understanding that primeval uh, complex. And to tell you the truth, when I teach an Old Testament class and it's just, just one semester, all the entire Old Testament, I don't start with Genesis 1 through 11. I start with Genesis 12. And by the time we get to the Exodus, or to the uh, exile rather, then I'll introduce Genesis 1 through 11 because in, in some ways it makes more sense then. One can understand why there's this juxtaposition of an all-powerful single god to Babylonian mythologies. Why is Noah a character who stands out dramatically from the flood characters that exist in other other stories, other uh, other flood stories, um, and we and we get a keener sense of who Israel finally understood their God to be. So, I, I hope that uh, I hope that helps a bit. Um, I I realize that, in fact, I expect that your your preconceptions are going to be challenged as you go through this course. Good. I hope they will, because you need to struggle. You need to struggle with understanding the Old Testament, not simply relying on the, the wonderful, the sweet, the kind words of your third grade Sunday school teacher. As wonderful, as wonderful as those words, as caring as that person was, you need to, you need to go beyond that. Okay, well, <laughs> send me your input and uh, enjoy continuing to understand and struggle with the Old Testament.